The gleaming white armor of the galaxy's elite soldiers has been a staple of Star Wars since the beginning, from the release of A New Hope straight through to the modern day. Since the release of the prequels, Star Wars' plastic armor has since become associated with the Republic's clone troopers as well. In Clone Wars era media, the so-called boys in white serve as the symbol for an era of chaos and change, the last defenders of a crumbling Republic. The clones go through two types of armor throughout the war, termed Phase 1 and Phase 2. But apart from their different helmets, the different kinds of clone armor can seem virtually identical. Just how different were they really and which set was actually better? In this video, we'll be answering those questions. Attention, Sergeant on deck! Phase 1 clone armor was designed by the Kaminoan armorsmiths of Topoka City in cooperation with Django Fett, who allowed the Kaminoans to examine his Mandalorian Super Commando armor for inspiration. As a result, Mandalorian influences are apparent in Phase 1 armor from the iconic T-shaped visor of the helmet to the general shape of their cuirass. But Phase 1 armor was also unique in plenty of ways. It was made of plastoid, for example a less durable but highly versatile alternative to more common alloys used in battle armor. This plastoid armor appeared bright white to most beings, though to the ultraviolet sensitive eyes of the Kaminoans, it was painted in a broad array of colors, and it was worn over a padded black body glove, which was insulated and pressurized. Over said body glove, clones wore 20 plates of armor, weighing 40 kilograms or 88 pounds in total. Both Phase 1 and Phase 2 armor consisted of two high traction boots, two greaves, two knee plates, two thigh plates, a cod piece, a cuirass with internal climate control systems, two shoulder bells, two rero braces, two elbow plates, two van braces, and two gauntlet plates. Clone armor also incorporated a placard worn over the abdomen, which wasn't counted among the 20 armor plates and appeared to be more flexible than the plastoid components of the suit. Phase 1 armor also included a utility belt and a helmet, the latter of which was the most important part of the entire kit. Obviously, the helmet provided protection, but it also featured an electronic heads-up display that could interface with the clone's blaster weapons, as well as vital communications gear. Each set of Phase 1 armor came with a comlink built into the helmet's chin, a comlink remote built into the left van brace, a pair of receivers over the years, and a high-powered transmitter built into the Phase 1 helmet's distinctive fin. This internal communications gear was soundproof, and it not only allowed clones to keep in touch with their squadmates in the heat of battle, but also kept clones in touch with local LAAT gunships and forward command centers. Then there's Phase 2 armor. All the basic components of the Phase 2 kit were the same, and only the helmet looked different. Even then, most of the helmet's features were the same, with the only notable addition made for the Phase 2 helmets being a pair of nozzles that could be hooked up to an external oxygen supply. This, coupled with clone armor's pre-existing ability to be sealed against vacuum, allowed clones in Phase 2 armor to survive in outer space for short periods of time. But that wasn't the only improvement Phase 2 armor made over Phase 1. Even though it might look identical to Phase 1 armor, most components of Phase 2 armor were actually very different from their predecessors, with the exception of the body glove, the utility belt, and possibly the placard. Every single plate of armor was redesigned to be far lighter than their original equivalents had been, meant as a fix to one of the biggest problems of the Phase 1 kit. It was heavy and hindered maneuverability. Clone troopers referred to Phase 1 armor as the body bucket due to its clunkiness and general uncomfortability, and many reported cramps and back problems caused by extended wear. Most clones were strong enough to be able to overcome these disadvantages in the heat of battle, but it still limited maneuverability and was a pain in the ass for troopers that already had more than enough to deal with. With Phase 2 armor, this problem was completely eliminated, but this came at the cost of protection. For all its faults, Phase 1 armor had been very durable, allowing its wearers to shrug off a few bolts of light blaster fire. Phase 2 armor provided much less protection against blaster fire, though it was still just as useful at protecting the user against extreme temperatures, fumes and poison gas, shrapnel, blunt instruments and slug thrower rounds, which were the primary purposes of clone armor. However, the added maneuverability and greater comfort afforded by Phase 2 
was generally considered worth it. Phase 2 armor also incorporated several other useful new gadgets and tweaks. The internal comm system was generally improved, incorporating a better enunciator into the helmet to make speech more comprehensible and making the transmitter fin more compact. Phase 2 boots incorporated grav field alternators and improved magnetization to allow for better balance in unstable or zero gravity environments. The Phase 2 set wasn't as effectively pressurized as its predecessor, but the new external respirators meant to be hooked up to the new helmet's chin ports meant that this wasn't much of a problem and the helmet's air filtration and oxygen supply systems were greatly improved across the board. The new helmet's visor and heads-up display were polarized and slightly tweaked from the original and Phase 2 armor was also made easier for clones to customize with attachments formerly reserved for ARC troopers and top commanders. Now that we've got a good idea of the differences between Phase 1 and Phase 2 armor, it's time to address which of the two sets was better. Phase 1 armor was clunkier but more protective, while Phase 2 armor more comfortable but less effective. Phase 1 armor could be pressure sealed more effectively, while Phase 2 generally had better atmosphere control systems. To start, let's make something clear. Both of these armor sets were brilliantly designed and highly effective. Clone and Stormtrooper armor is considered useless by a great many fans, but that couldn't be further from the truth. It couldn't stop a lightsaber or a direct hit from most military grade blaster weapons, but those were only one of a hundred dangers you could encounter on the battlefield. When troopers charged into battle, they also had to worry about environmental dangers, concussive force from explosions, fumes, heats, and above all, shrapnel, just to name a few of these common dangers. Clone and Stormtrooper armor made all of these non-factors along with glancing blaster hits. This is a really big deal, especially since shrapnel, not bullets, is the leading cause of casualties on modern battlefields. Clones didn't have to worry about any of that. Their armor allowed them to focus solely on the enemy, making them more effective combatants. But not all clone armor was created equal, of course. Some would argue that both Phase 1 and Phase 2 armor had their own advantages, most notably Captain Rex. When Rex was issued his Phase 2 armor, he took a blowtorch to it, combining parts of the Phase 2 kit with parts of the Phase 1 kit. Most of his armor appears to have been Phase 2, but he kept the chest plate and visor from his Phase 1 kit, welding them into his Phase 2 cuirass and helmet. This allowed Rex to keep his old HUD, which he apparently considered superior to the newer one, possibly because the shape of the T-visor of the Phase 2 armor was harder to see out of. This hybrid armor also gave Rex more protection in the chest area due to the increased density of Phase 1 armor. Considering that the Phase 1 cuirass likely saved Rex's life when he was shot by a sniper on Seleucami, that choice makes a lot of sense for him. But overall, we'd have to say that Phase 2 armor was better than Phase 1. The increased protection of the Phase 1 kit likely saved many clones' lives, but superior ergonomics and increased maneuverability can be just as valuable, and when the other improvements made with Phase 2 gear are taken into account, the winner is clear. Phase 1 clone armor was iconic, and it did its job well, but at the end of the day, it was replaced by the Phase 2 kit for a reason. We'd also argue that Phase 2 armor looks better as well, though that's our subjective opinion. But what do you think? Do you prefer Phase 1 or Phase 2 armor? Has anything we said in today's video changed your mind? Let us know your thoughts in the comments section below. And as always guys, thank you so much for watching and I hope to see you in the next video.